Well, ordinarily it should be tourism season in the Gambia, but deck chairs sit empty on the straw parasols due to a slump caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Tourist season in the smallest country on the African continent begins around, uh, but fund seekers remain scarce. This next package tells us why and what some leisure sports are doing to fill the gap. Along the coastal line and sandy beaches of Banjo, the Gambian capital, lies a once booming tourism industry. Hotels and resorts that were usually filled with tourists and now occupied with empty chair and still water swimming pools. Streets are bare and cars which previously moved tourists around are now grounded. The industry, like many others, have been hit by the COVID-19 pandemic. We see a little bit of, resili of uh, rebounding of uh, tourism um, after, after, uh, after, after COVID. But uh, let's say right now it's somewhere around 25% of where um, we should be. But Mali has a strategy to mitigate the prevailing circumstances. 25% of our rooms are occupied from actually businessmen and also um, our neighbor, um, people from our neighbor, neighboring countries. So this is a strategy, this is where we pivoted from the tour operator to now the, the domestic and regional market. A lone tourist walks the beaches unaccompanied in a location usually filled with tens of visitors. But she has some company in other visitors who are part of Merle's strategy to revive the once busy resort. Yeah, it's 15 minutes from my home. I'm staying at Sukuta on the highway. Yeah, it's different, you know. Like, you know, you, I'm staying with my family. Like, if you want to relax, you cannot relax in your family house. Too much of noise, kids. But here, you have your own room. You can relax, no disturbance. Tourism is one of the Gambia's major gross domestic product contributors. However, the industry has been devastated after coming to a total standstill for over one year. The industry will benefit immensely from the foreign exchange of visitors like Kirk and Karin Sleeman. I don't want to come across here and it be little England because some English people don't travel very well. We've been, we've been to some places where you're ashamed to be English. But, um, no, it's nice to meet. It is nice to meet yeah. other people. Yeah. But it's, I don't, it's nice to meet other English people, but I don't no. want it to be full of English people. I need, I, you know, I no. want to meet people from yeah. other regions. I we want to meet met people. We friends from all around yeah. the world oh, when yeah. we've travelled. Gambia's tourism sector employs more than 150,000 workers. It is the country's second largest contributor of GDP after agriculture. But when the coronavirus emerged in March last year, the government was forced to shut down the industry and ordered people to stay at home to control the spread of the virus. Well, from our perspective, we shouldn't be too over-dependent on the our source market, we were concentrating too much on the European market, neglecting our sub-regional market. And we have learned that now we have to embrace our sub-regional market so that at least we will have complementarity. In the event there is a crisis on one section, we should be able to actually recover quickly by concentrating on the other side. There should be a package purely for the locals, because if you want to charge the same package you charge for the tourists, uh, the affordability is actually um, a question mark, and we don't want that. But we're working with, with our partners closely so that at least they will reduce the prices, that, you know, Gambians will also have the chance to, to also you know, explore, um, you know, what the Gambia has to offer. Like many other tourism-dependent economies, the self-styled smiling coast of Africa is waiting and hoping for the return to normal from COVID-19.